Hi everybody, this is Scott Sad. Happy Father's Day to all dads out there. Uh, earlier today I put out a tweet wherein I said that of all uh, roles that I assume, uh, none is as important as uh, being a good father to my children. Uh, treat your children with dignity, invest in them, pay attention to them, interact with them, nurture them so that they can grow up to be good citizens. Uh, I, I wanted to just mention a few, you know, evolutionarily relevant points relating to fatherhood. Humans are one of the rare biparental species. Uh, in most cases, uh, when you have a uh, a species uh, that is sexually reproducing, typically the only contribution that the male has to that uh, reality is a copulatory act. Uh, in a few cases. Certainly, for example, in birds, dads are quite uh, invested. Uh, I actually, in my forthcoming book, I talk about a paper published a few years ago where uh, they looked at uh, fatherhood across different taxa of animals. And when it comes to the human context, human dads are actually quite extraordinary in that we are very, very vested. That's why we are officially... Uh, classified as a biparental species, whereas the minimal obligatory parental investment of each sex is not the same. Women invest more than men uh, for all sorts of reasons. But e even going to, say, the gametes, right? I mean, a typical woman will have 400 ova that are uh, from her from menach to menopause, the onset of the menses to menopause. Uh, in a single ejaculation, a man can have 250 million spermatozoa. So even at that level, given that ova are much more scarce and rare than uh, spermatozoa, already that creates the tilted reality of minimal parental obligatory investment. But there's a whole bunch of other factors that makes it that while women are much more vested in their children, men are too. That's why we've evolved uh, uh, romantic love, right? The, the, the hormonal and physiological and emotional mechanisms that bond a couple together long enough so that they can see their offspring to the reproductive window, right? Humans have a long juvenility period. And so it really does require uh, both sets of parents uh, to raise a child successfully. Uh, and there are all kinds of studies that look at what happens to a child when a father is vested, is around, or is not. One of the uh, areas where I you know is, is uniquely uh, exciting from an evolutionary perspective is to look at the onset of menage the onset of the menses as a function of whether the father is present or not and it turns out that when uh, f the father is not present in the home girls go into uh, menage earlier uh, in other words they enter the reproductive window earlier if a father is not there that's a perfect demonstration of the interaction between physiology in this case you know when you begin your menstrual cycle and an environmental factor whether a father is present or not which demonstrates the interactionist view of evolutionary psychology it's not all biological determinism genes interact with the environment to create who we are that's called the interactionist view an interaction between genes and environments uh, of course uh when a father is not present, it has all sorts of other negative downstream effects. Uh, so Larry Elder uh, is someone who has often talked about how many of the problems within his community, meaning his in the black community, the African-American community in the United States, stems from the fact that now there's an overwhelming number of children who are born in that community with, with the reality of a father being absent. And you really need both. Notwithstanding, we just went through Pride Week where love is love and so on. That's all great. But we are a sexually reproducing species where uh, kids expect typically a father figure and a mother figure to be uh, as part of their rearing. Now, that doesn't mean that same-sex couples can be fantastic parents. But from an evolutionary biological perspective, certainly having a father brings about many, many positive downstream effects to a child so of course we should always honor our mothers but we should also make sure to honor our fathers so 
there's all kinds of wonderful things that one can study relating to fatherhood. I won't go through all of it. Uh, from from an evolutionary perspective, I mean. So, for example, uh, a, a soon to be expectant father. So, fathers that have a, a child that's coming soon uh, to the home will see a drop in their testosterone levels, and the the reason for that is that that's nature's way of making sure that the husband's libidinal drives go down, so that they can channel their investments, their daily investments, much more towards. Uh, investing in their children than th about thinking about sex. It also equalizes the libidinal drives or lack thereof between uh, the woman who just gave birth and the man within a union. Uh, there's also great studies on paternity uncertainty. And so uh, there's, you know, one of the fundamental differences in terms of sex differences between men and women originates from the idea that there is no such thing as maternity uncertainty. But of course, there is such a thing as paternity uncertainty. We didn't evolve with DNA paternity tests. And therefore, many of the emotional, cognitive and behavioral uh, systems that men have developed are precisely to thwart paternity uncertainty. So again, there's all kinds of really cool things that you could study from an evolutionary perspective as relating to fathers. But moving away from a second from you know, evolutionary mechanisms, uh, if you have a father with whom uh, you have a great relationship, make sure to remind them that you love them, you appreciate them. And uh, also always remember that while the, the Bible, if we're going to get religious, uh, uh, exhorts us to uh, respect our parents, it truly is a two-way street. Parents also have to respect their children. It's not one way. It's not, I'm older than you, therefore I'm always right. It really is a two-way flow. Of course, children by default have to respect their parents, uh, but parents too must invest in their children. So if you're a dad, uh, make sure that you raise your sons and daughters to be great citizens. Have a great, happy Father's Day. Earlier today, I went with my family to uh, have brunch at this uh, place that we often go to for such uh, events. And then I walked nearly two hours to try and burn uh, the heavy brunch that I had. Happy Father's Day. Talk to you soon. Cheers.